so the way I listen to music, for the most part, and, and I mean, I don't know why this is, but I'll just get into a, a, a particular group or an artist, and I'll just spend two months or three months or some amount of time around there just obsessing about this uh, this one thing, this one group or this one uh, artist or something. And I'll be like revisiting all the... Uh, it's usually someone I've known already, you know. I have a group of favorite bands that I cycle in and out of, you know. And I'll revisit their music, listen to... Watch bootlegs, live shows on YouTube, read interviews. So lately, um, it's been Killing Joke is the, this, is the target. <laughs> so I've been talking a lot about them. And uh, especially with regards to their uh, magic use and Jazz Coleman and his takes on um, the esoteric world. Uh, and I read something today that had been posted, I think, in 2020 on his, his Facebook. Now, I don't have Facebook. Um, I used to use it, but I didn't do enough stuff there, so I figured if someone's looking for me, it's better that they find me somewhere where I'm actually doing something, like where I'm, you know, adding content to. Like, I do Instagram. I'm pretty active. Twitter, I'm kind of active. And here on YouTube, uh, you know, I'd rather have them than come here than to find some old thing. So I dis, uh, deactivated the account. I still have a couple that um, connected to old bands and old projects and things like that, but I, I don't go in for any reason. So I was looking at a... They have a, a Killing Joke um, fan club a, where they report stuff. A, hey, they got a Killing Joke fan club. They report stuff that each band member is doing and Jazz was, had, keeps some kind of diary there I guess and um, yeah it's weird I don't understand like he sounds like the way he's talking he sounds like me you know he's talking about how uh, you know all the, the things that are weaponized against you he's talking about the coup being um, not what they you know say it is uh, now, in my mind, he, he's just an, an NWO shell. Like, you know, he's Satanist, working for the, uh, the bad guys, whatever. You know, they, I'd never, I, I kind of always thought that. But on the other hand, he's uh, parsing out all this sort of humanist kind of information. Like, uh, he went on about 5G in this... Uh, Report, which I don't know a lot about, but I hear, I mean, I hear it's not good. It's just one of those areas I never looked into. You can't look into all this stuff. You can't. There's only so many sideways endeavors you can dedicate your time to. Although something that could uh, kill you where you stand is certainly maybe, maybe a valuable sideways endeavor. But uh, yeah, so he's talking like he's one of us. It just made me think it's like how they handle these guys. Because he's definitely, um, you know, he's definitely uh, controlled in some way. It, it just makes me think about that. This is definitely, you know, my um, looking at Killing Joke and um, researching them and going back. This is the ultimate of horizontal pursuits. But it's also entertainment. Uh, it's the arts. So that's what I use for the excuse because otherwise it's a lot of time that I could be putting towards something else. But I need breaks. I need to get into the frivolous sometimes. Let me go through them all. It's a little rainy out here. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's raining. It's raining in the mall. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Good to see you. How are you? Things good? Things good? All right, man. Good seeing you. Yeah, a friend of mine, I think the camera freaked him out. I moved it away from him, though. I don't, I don't, like, I don't film people unless they know, you know? Like, he's a good guy. He's a um, neighbor of mine. This is my building. But, uh, yeah, 
it's it's the it's the most sideways of sideways like endeavors. It's not something that oh Jesus, fucking thumb cam. I don't know how long that goes on. Like sometimes I'll put that on there. I'll put that on there. Sometimes I'll be holding it with my thumb. I just woke up. This is why I can't fucking articulate. Well, that's the excuse for the first couple hours. I'm awake anyway, and then later on it'll be some other excuse. But yeah, I'll, I'll be walking around with my thumb on it, not knowing, and then later I just watch the footage. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Get your shit together. But anyway, uh, it makes me wonder how they handle these guys. Like, what? Because he's putting out information that, like, is something that I'd want people to know, right? But he's definitely not one of us. It's a weird game they play. Uh, and the only other thing about him is, I mean, they're not that famous. They're super, super influential. They definitely, them, their existence changed uh, music, for sure. I mean, no, no killing joke. You have no Nirvana, you have no Metallica, you have no lots of things. Um, industrial doesn't exist, you know? Um, so they're far more influential than they ever were popular, which is a damn shame because their music is incredible. Uh, although a lot of it's made with uh, black magic, <laughs> you know, it, that's the thing. It's like I enjoy it anyway. It's like you gotta, uh, there's a separation between art and artist. It's tough with the Killing Joke though because they're, the artist is baked right into the, to the art. But yeah, he's going on about how uh, they just, they're, they're looking to call people. They have a song called The Culling, uh, which is about population control. And he was saying a lot of the things I was talking about, uh, population control, they have a song called The Virus, which, which came out years before this all happened, describing this exact situation. Uh, he fancies himself as some kind of uh, prophet. Uh, he definitely has the narcissism thing down, which you kind of need if you're like a singer in a band. I was never, I never had that thing down. I never had the confidence of that kind of narcissism. I, I wasn't good at being that, in that role anyway, but uh, he's got that all down. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just wonder what, what they're allowed to say, what they're not allowed to say. Do they check in with people? I mean, I, I, I don't know how this whole thing works. I don't really care. I know it works. Like the thing is, um, a lot of this stuff, it's not people uh, figuring this out in a back room somewhere. Like, okay, we're gonna have this. And it's just the system itself, the, the force itself leaks into things. Um, it runs scripts. Uh, it, it, it just leaks into wherever it can. It's not set up by like men. I mean, when you look at some of these things where they have callbacks to, like Matt did one of Matt, Jesus, I should just fucking put a link to his channel here and call it a day. He had a thing on retro causality uh, where things that happen in the future uh, leak into the past, basically. I don't think it works, at the, in my opinion, it's always leaking. There's this dark force, the opposing force, the one here that was supposed to be the obstacle in the test area uh, that has completely taken over, turned all the levers up to 11 to suck the most uh, energy, juice, God juice out of us, and that's what's going on. The whole um, economy, uh, the whole workforce, this isn't created to prop up a monetary system. Well, it is, but they don't need that monetary system. They don't need money from that. They need you involved in this force because when you're all working in this workforce, in this economy, you're creating what they really want, which is the energy out of it. So this, the whole system's like a power generator. It's a way for them to, to skin, you know, the God juice off you. And that's the only reason why it exists, because they don't need the money, they, they print the money. They, they make the money. The money is for us to keep us... They need to get our energy out of the hamster wheel, okay? So they build the hamster wheel so we'll run. 
but they don't care about the, the, the money that comes from the hamster wheel. They're just, that we get the money, they get the energy from us running in the hamster wheel. I think I, I fucking, I think I nailed that analogy. That's pretty awesome. I don't, I don't do that often. I don't, I don't know if it was good, but it wasn't shit terrible like most of my, most of my analogies. That's what it is. The, the economy, the workforce, uh, the reason everybody has to get up and go to work so that they can have a, a food and a, and a house. That's the machine. That's the system that's moving. That, um, and what they get out of it is the, the work and the sweat and the stress and the emotions you put in to being on the hamster wheel. Because it's not just being on the hamster wheel, you're just running. There's a lot of other things that go along with it. You know, you could, I mean, they, they take all that. They, they suck all that energy. There's something else too, I was thinking about how, yeah, and they need it to be low vibrational because they can't digest higher vibrations. So they need to keep you low vibrational. Um, anything that's uh, sadness, depression, fear, um, anxiety, anything that's lower down on, on the list of frequency. Uh, because it's not so much, you know, I, I used to think it's because they, it, it ta it's a, tastes better to them, but it doesn't. Uh, it's more digestible. The lower the, the lower the frequency, the more digestible it is. However, that, however it works, that's just like I get the idea. Uh, is that it's easier to consume in the lowest state. And when you're in the lowest state, not only can they consume your energy, but they can jump in and out of your bodies. Uh, as what's happened to a lot of uh, people I see around here, a lot of drug addicts or homeless people or guys that are in despair. You know, they, they get taken over. I've seen it, it's happened to me. I've, wa I've watched, you know, I've had a conversation with uh, one thing, one entity thing, with through about six different guys over two days. The same one. That was a that was a fun summer. <laughs> that was like what? Tw that was 2018, I think. That was summer 2018 or 2017. Yeah, that was a crash course in this shit. Because at the time, like when I first moved here, I was just beginning to discover that maybe uh, my my atheist my atheist take wasn't the wasn't what's really what was happening. And I'd pretty much been an atheist since I don't know. Church scared the hell out of me, right? I was, I was afraid of it, and it seemed like it just seemed like another mechanism of control. It's not, and I was wrong, but uh, that's a, a path that they like you to be led down, and I was. Uh, so I had no idea what the fuck was happening. I here's what I thought. I thought these three people. We're having a secret meeting at night and like our pictures were up on like a, a board or something with all this information about okay this guy is him and what to say to him and they plan this all out that's the only thing i could i could think of because i i didn't conceive that it could have been a, a demonic entity you know i that never came into my head uh, how, that would be so when i first started having problems with the demonic entities me and my friend uh, I'd never had trouble with them on my own. Like when I was alone, it's like I don't think they wanted me. Uh, I think it was him they wanted. But anyway, I was sure that there was a, a gang of uh, homeless people that had a meeting every night before they went out, like cops do on those procedural shows. You know, they all sit in the room and they have the board up there, and you know, everybody's eating donuts and. You know, arrest some kids while you're out there tonight. Good job, guys. You know, those kind of things. I was convinced. I'm like, oh, well, they, they must meet together and figure the shit out. You know, um, but that's not what was happening. Uh, surprise. <laughs> like, that's, but uh, that's the best I could come up with. Because I wasn't even thinking that this is something supernatural happening. Um, that's how far away I was from understanding how any of this stuff works. So I got thrown into it uh, at the deep end of the pool. I'm gonna go on 
I'm gonna tell a little bit more about that story today, but right now I'm at my destination, so as always, uh, don't blame the teacher. 